Well, glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Um, it is the 9th of June, 2022. Um, well, the miracles are all coming up over there. Uh, really nice. I don't know if I've seen any sprouts from the uh, poppy seeds I planted in there, but, um, well, they come up, they come up. They don't, they don't. What do you do? Um, I put them in the freezer for about a month before I put them out there because they like cold. To helps them to um, germinate, so I hear. So we'll wait. It might take a minute or two for them to come up. God willing. Um, I noticed over there where I've decided to make into a lawn that I've got a forest of bamboo that's coming up. So I think I'm going to get out there on the good next dry day and start with my dung fork, start going to town trying to pull the roots out of there. Because I would like to build a lawn over there on that other end. Be nice. There's a nice lawn instead of a bunch of thicket. And, Anyway, um, well, let's see. Uh, all the hops, all the, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm really, it's, I'm really thinking about extending the pole. Um, I think if I get a taller pole and, and put a, like, I got this right here, a can on the side of it. Um, see if I can find something to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's see. Put the guitar down for a second. I, I really, I want to jack, I want to maybe add another 10 feet to the height of that, the pole that the hops are growing up on. So, let's just say um, that this stick represents the, the pole that I want to set up there. I want to leave a piece of it down below and uh, hook the can to it. Not this particular can, probably, but a heavier one. And um, kind of bolt that to the pole, and then it can set right onto the top of the pole that's already there. And be strapped at the bottom with something like rope or whatever tie it there um i think that i could get away with doing that uh maybe i could drill drill a hole through it and put a dowel through there so to hold it right onto there so we'll see um i'm gonna have to uh, set it up so that um the pole goes quite a bit further down so that i can handle it and also make the pole more balanced so if i had to like half the can halfway up the pole i'm going to go up there and uh take video of that one when, when i begin to do that little task i see that the hops vines are they're like six feet above the top of the pole and only the lord knows where they'll end up if i don't do something with it so i got to give it something to climb to because right now the hops are in their stage of climbing upward and uh later on in a month or two they'll be they'll be uh growing outward and then You'll see the little flowers appear on it, and then the catkins will form from that. Um, the hops has got a wonderful smell and taste to it, you know, in my opinion. Um, so I'll be sure to get video of that and show it to you. Uh, just finished watching this movie called uh, Unidentified, um, talking about the, to explain the, the, the so-called UFO phenomena. Uh, there are things that are going on and um, right under our nose we wouldn't even know it now I, I, there was an incident happened here quite a number of years ago um i'm not going to name who the person is that was involved in it but a person supposedly threatened the president um with violence if anything happened to his sister who had joined the military um he was all upset about it i guess so he called and threatened the president well within five or ten minutes um, even a helicopter landed in the yard, I guess, what I was told. Uh, cars just showed up within minutes. And, and they, you know, the guy, well, I won't say anything further than that, but just makes you wonder. Um, here I am in a little one-horse town called Dexter, Maine. And, uh, wow, <laughs> that means that they're probably right close by somewhere. Right close by, secretly. Wow. Well, the Lord knows that, too. The Lord knows where all they are. Um, and I'm not here to say what, one way or another that uh, UFOs are a, that, that somehow the people in the deep government are involved in it. But it, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not really, I've, I've, I've trained myself to not be surprised by too much. Um, but I believe in my heart that there's a demon forces involved uh, in uh, conning the world, conning this country and the people in this country uh, into throwing Jesus away and believing in aliens and, and, and it, there's, there's all kinds of things at play. Getting people to believe that men uh, came, evolved from other life forms like apes and whatnot. Um, 
basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to cre cre uh, create man in the image of the beasts. And so, uh, you know, my father, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I had a Superman co comic book I brought home from school. And my father found it and confiscated it. Um, I, I was I didn't know, understand that then, but today I understand. Um, if you go into the apocalypse and read, I think it's the 13th chapter. Um, I can read just a little bit for you here. I'll go grab my Bible real quick right here, this Bible anyway, and open up to the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. So I can read something to you here. Talking about uh, men being created in the image of the beast and worship the beast in his image. Um, well, let's see. Okay, here we go to uh, Revelations chapter 13. All right. Let's see. He hath power. Oh, let me back it up. I'm going to go to. Uh, that is going to really say well, we'll start at 11. I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and all them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, say, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls all, both small and great, rich, poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, so that, and that no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him have understanding. Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. That's the place where it's written. Um, it, it, it's a very controversial chapter, obviously. Um, well, let's, let's just take a look here for a minute. Um, go back probably to the, the 30s and 40s um, was radio that men started producing monsters. Uh, a monster is really something that resembles a human, but his behavior is something else, not human. That's really the, you know, the word monster in a nutshell. Um, now, in time, um, people started, uh, people invented these Marvel um, characters. Um, Superman, really, they got to, they, they really got us as kids to look for a Superman to come and take care of the ills we have on our planet, which is contrary to the word of God. Uh, no, there's not good according to the word of God. So, but they bring these superheroes, which are subject to human passions and even villainous characters who can call fire down from heaven and do all these. Look, and, and we'll look at X-Men. Um, most people don't know uh, in the Western world that the the letter X in the Greek language means Christ. So that's what we symbolize Jesus Christ. I see um, see how's it go? N I K A and X C Well let me see. Yeah. Um, well let me go over and read it. It's written on that cross on the top of that iconostasis. I C X C and I K A. Uh, that means Jesus Christ conquers. Um, the term for Jesus in Greek is an, the letter X. I didn't know that until I became an Orthodox Christian uh, to find out and started going to the Greek Orthodox Church in Bangor that that's what that meant. Uh, when they say X must, basically what they have is they have the Greek letter X or the letter X for the for the Greek word for Christ. And a mass um, attached to that as a suffix. So, X-Men, 
um, have special powers. Uh, they're anointed, supposedly, I'll put that in quotes, anointed men. <laughs> False Christs. Uh, this stuff is to is propaganda. Leading men to worship of the beast in his image. Now you look at these men, you look at these X-Men, you look at these other heroes. Uh, you've got Spider-Man. Okay, you've got the Wolverine. Um, and other um, heroes that are named after animals and so forth. Because uh, they have created man in the image of the beast. Now, what started off as comic books turned into living picture. What I mean by that is uh, they're able now, they, were, they, they became able to animate the Marvel cartoons, the Marvel comic book characters uh, into cartoons. That was the next uh, batch of propaganda that they fed to the kids. They've been, it's been going on for quite some time. It's been all on kids' TV on Saturday morning and things, you know. So finally, uh, you know, we see that um, these anointed men, supposedly heroes who are going to save the world, are being depicted in movies. So they can really play with the special effects and really deceive you into thinking that the that something like that's possible for these men to call fire down from heaven and all sorts of miracles. The TV has been has been the one tool that's been used by the devil to give life to the image of the beast. Now that's all leading up to something. That's all leading us right up to the the. Um, I don't know if it's right to call it the advent, but the appearing of the man of sin, um, the Antichrist, uh, the wicked one. So they've conditioned us from little children until full grown adults to worship humans instead of God. Now, people worship their, their sports heroes, they worship their. It's, it, it, it's turned into things like uh, professional wrestling and uh, UFC fighting rings and boxing rings and football fields. Uh, people worshipping their heroes, worshipping man in the image of the beast. And you look at it, and another thing, you look at the, uh, these teams. You've got the Florida Marlins, you've got the uh, Pittsburgh, or you've got the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and, and on and on it goes, uh, that they, the team wants to incorporate the characters and qualities of that certain type of animal in the spirit of their team and in the spirit of their play. Uh, giving life to the image of the beast. Um, now that's leading man into prison worldwide. He's going to cause all small and great to bear his mark. Uh, now, that mark thing began way back in the beginning when they first opened the first market. There had to be a way for somebody to be able to distinguish the products that they built and made to sell from the other products. So man made his mark, his trademark. Now, that's coming down to, the, to this uh, whole deal with corporations who have these trademarks that are backed up by teams of lawyers and, and, and um, people that lobby the government to keep laws and to make certain laws that really are not to the benefit of anything else but their own self. So all these threads are all coming in to the final mark, the final trademark. Uh, and they produced a human race, a human um, culture and society that's created in the image of the beast. Uh, in my ignorance and in my young, younger days, I had tattoos of, put on me. I repent of all this now, and I would remove them if I could. But now the Lord knows that, that you know, I mean, even if I do remove them, um, I've had to repent. And I have to tell you that this is the stupidest thing I ever did was putting tattoos of animals and all this stuff on my skin. Now, all that I did in ignorance, and the Lord has forgiven me for that. I have no intentions ever to put another one of them on my body, ever. And I dis I'll disown my, the beliefs that I had before I became a Christian. Now, I, I may be, like I said, you know, uh, they showed up in five minutes. So when it comes time for them to get rid of the Christians who stand in the way of this, 
they're, they're probably going to be there in five minutes. <laughs> uh, so we're called to give our life for the Lord. Now, in that day and in that time, that's when the Holy Spirit will come upon those people. Um, uh, these disciples were, were cowards on the night of the crucifixion, on the night they took him away for his trial. Um, they ran away and hid. But after that, that the Holy Spirit came upon them, then they were able to die for the truth. So we've been sealed in that day will the Holy Spirit come upon us. Um, it's not going to be like it was in the early church. He's not coming, he, he came back as a lamb already. Now he's coming back as a lion. Um, it's going to be similar to, it's going to be similar to um, what happened in Egypt. Um, the Lord's going to plague them. Mm-hmm. That's where the Christian comes in, with the servant of Christ, who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, that fire burns the wicked. It doesn't burn the righteous. So, the Lord himself shall descend with his holy angels and with his saints on white horses. So, anyway, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The man of sin will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. He's going to take that dragon and chain him up, throw him into the abyss. At the very end of times, he'll loosen him for a little season just to give him enough rope to hang himself on. So if you do believe, then keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and your heart and your faith in Jesus Christ. But if you don't believe, well... People that say, well, um, I don't really believe that there's a God. You know, I'm, I'm my own God. I'll do what I want. So, you know, if they're wrong, boy, they in some kind of trouble. And nobody knows the people that say and doubt God and doubt, doubt God's existence. Oh, it's going to be a sad day for them, I'm afraid. If they're wrong, we're going into the ground, too. Nothing, it's all over with. But if they're, if we're right and they're wrong, well, they're going to be in trouble. Give your heart and mind to Jesus Christ. I'm going to get this guitar out now here and uh, try to pick something. I don't know. Uh, about time for the prayer here pretty quick. So I'm going to make it short and sweet. Just glory to God. Lord, give me strength.
I need to practice that song a lot more. Now, I don't mind getting on here and flumming it up in front of anybody. So you can see that uh, I'm being honest here. You know, I'm not the best guitar player in the world. I know that. I got, In fact, I just heard my cousin playing uh, on a on Facebook. A soundtrack or something like that my sister got from Facebook. And man, he is a fabulous guitar player. And uh, boy, uh, Roger, that sounded good. And uh, you please say hello to uh, to Mike there for me. I'm really sorry that Mike ended up coming in having a stroke. So anyway, I, I I just I am what I am, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to be put on any airs or any of that stuff. I'm just a poor country, little simple country bumpkin. And I'm happy to be that. So glory to God. Have a nice day, folks.